think that's another one of Lee's photos. I'm not real sure, but I think so. But uh, beautiful creature. And I think we'll end with that one. <laughs> No, I mean for a nesting pair. Okay, oh. so um, r roughly half, it, it depends on densities, mm -hmm. but, but they can tolerate up to um, a quarter mile between nests in, in high density areas. D okay. The study in Oregon had nests fairly close. But what, what I find here is one owl um, nest about every um, square mile. So 640 acres, you know, and give, give or take, you, you got to have the right habitat. If you had really, really good habitat, lots of really good prey, lots of good nesting platforms, then, then they would tolerate each other uh, closer. Great grays are fairly tolerant to each other, um, but if you had um, <coughs> horned owls or, or barred owls, then they would probably spread out. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I have a question about uh, a pair of owls, and then some idiot shoots one of them, and they disappear, the remaining one, and it's gone about a year, and it's back, but there's no mate. Do they mate for life? M most owls do mate for life, yeah. um, but they will, they're fairly monogamous, but they will um, pick up a new mate if if they come back. So that's probably what that owl did was come back. I'm not sure what kind it was, but come back and maybe hope it was a great grave. It was a great grave. I did identify it, yeah. And uh, I watched them for quite a while and they hung around a little wet meadow like it was alongside of a forest road on my land. And, and they went over to the gully. It was over on the south slopes of Mount Ann. Okay. Yep. And you know, we, we see them around. I see them over on the other side of the valley, on the west side of the valley there, uh, occasionally on fence posts in the evening. Yeah. He's flown across in front of me a couple times, but I, I don't see any, the nest is unused and, and there doesn't seem to be any nesting going on. So likely there's still grays around your place. Um, a lot of the nests, a lot of these natural nests I've, I've shown you and platforms I go back to year after year to see if, if they're, re, you know, re-nesting. Um, they'll nest in the same nest maybe up to three years if it's a really good area, but they'll they'll move on to alternate nests. So if you're, you know, you're patient and that nest stays there, um, just keep looking at something may nest back in it. But look around too, because um, this year, I went to a, this this nest uh, right here in particular, and nothing was in it. And it's been two years. And I'm thinking, what the heck? Um, but I just started looking around, and within um, three quarters of a mile, I found what I'm pretty sure is the same female and male from from this nest. So they're, they're probably fairly close. If that if that owl paired back up, thank you. Move their eyes in their orbit, and that's why they have to twist their head? That's a good question. I haven't asked that. I, I believe they can move their eyes, but yeah, they can turn 360 and then some. Hmm. It's amazing what their, their heads can do, and it's something to do with their vertebrae, um, but it's it's pretty neat to, to watch them. My population fluctuation affect the uh, habitat for the, uh, the owls. You know, I, I don't think how it's um, affecting the food supply. Oh, the food supply? There, there's a lot of, I, I call them arboreal um, critters down, you know, underneath the, the sticks and the logs and stuff, um, the voles and the, the gophers, the pocket gophers. I don't think the coyote populations affect them, affect them that bad. Yeah. What, what is the lifespan and how many... Um, Seasons can they, um, you know, create, yeah. So, lifespan, the, the studies down in um, Oregon, um, 12 plus years, you know, for, for an owl. And then um, they'll, they'll breed, they start breeding. Um, the earliest they've ever tried um, 
in the, the literature is about two years, but they, they're not real successful. So right when they hit three is when they'll start breeding. Um, so uh, right around 10 years is the, kind of their breeding lifespan if, if everything goes right. Which owl do we hear nocturnally uh, when you're out hunting in about half hour before dark? You hear the hoo 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 hoo. That's a great horned owl. And Dr. Bone, you're really good at that too. <laughs> I didn't need to know any more other than, than the hoot, so. Um, yeah. Very nice. Um, Dr. Bone brings up a really good point. If you just pay attention and listen to, to the notes, you, you can tell right away what, what the owl is. There's a lot of, a lot of websites. Uh, that, Cornell Ornithology is a really good one. You type in the, the name and you click on the, the species and it'll bring up uh, pictures and audio. And you can click on them and say, yep, that was it, or nope, I'm going to keep searching. And, uh, you know, if you would have done a who, um, Dr. Bone, that sounded like who cooks for you, I would have been the barred owl, but he did a good, great horned owl imitation. Yep, uh, the photograph, the beautiful photographs uh, that you have in the presentation of uh, of course, are all um, taken during daylight hours, and it seems there was a bit of activity. Are they really that active during daylight, or, they, or? no? And no, you're right; they're not. Um, so, a, a lot of these photos, um, you know, took some time to sit there and, and get those shots. But when they're nesting, they are active, or at least the male is active, because um, he's out. He's got to feed the female um, for that whole basically two month time period because for that first month when she's incubating she won't move um, for maybe a couple minutes at a time um, she'll fly off to defecate and regurgitate pellets but then she'll come right back to incubate so that male he's real active for that two month time period between May and, and June uh, during the day because they, they've got to they've got to feed those chicks but they are primarily nocturnal prey. yeah in the back is there any large stand of true, never logged old growth in the Okanagan? Is there any left? True old growth unlogged? Yeah, there probably is. Um, gosh, you know, the, the north end of, of Bonaparte Mountain, um, down in some draws maybe, that, that equipment couldn't get into. And then the, the big tree botanical area, um, we, we've got those two big large trees and you know that that's our one botanical area that's got some true old growth in it so yeah but there, there's not not much left around so generally what you're seeing is either the, the dead old growth or second second growth timber that's providing that that natural platform if it's a broken off top. <laughs> 